Hey everybody, today we're gonna to be going through and I'm gonna to explain to you how to use the XLOOKUP function in Excel. Now, super quick before we start, I think it's important to understand when to use the XLOOKUP function. And it's gonna be the exact same as any time you would use any lookup function in Excel. And that's when you have two values that are linked to each other that don't vary. So in my example here, I've got a bunch of different item names and I've got a type listed next to them, whether they're a fruit drink or whether they're a milk drink. And that doesn't change no matter how many times I type orange drink out, I know that that's gonna be a fruit drink. And what an XLOOKUP does is it links these two values together so that I don't need to type out the latter every single time. So ultimately when we're finished with the XLOOKUP, I'm just gonna be able to type orange drink and fruit is gonna appear automatically and so on for the other types of drinks. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you need to do when you start making an XLOOKUP in Excel is you need to make a cheat sheet for Excel so that it knows how you're gonna label each one of your values. What I mean by that is that you need to create something like this. In this yellow section, I've got each drink name listed one time and then also listed what type each drink is. This is what Excel is gonna look at so it knows what to return every time you type out one of these drink names. And since it's just a cheat sheet, like I said, you only need to list each one one time. So now let's get into actually starting the XLOOKUP. It's really quite straightforward. I'm gonna type into the blank cell where I want type to appear right here. And I'm gonna type equals XLOOKUP with an open parentheses. You can see when we open up the parentheses that there are six different arguments that Excel looks for. The lookup value, the lookup array, the return array, if not found, match mode, and search mode. Of these six, only three are required. The ones that are in brackets at the end are optional. So up first is the lookup value, which means, what do you want me to look for in order to return a value from? So in this example here, we wanted to look at the cell directly to the left of where we are, and that's A2, the orange drink. So I'm just gonna click on that, and then A2 is gonna automatically appear in my formula. Once we've got that, we can go ahead and type a comma to move to the next section, which is the lookup array. And this is the XLOOKUP asking you, well, where do you want me to look for it? Where should I look for the cell that you just clicked previously? And we want it to look, of course, in column E. Now we've got a couple of different options. It's pretty common in other tutorials to go through and kind of highlight and drag the area that you want Excel to look in. But I find it much easier and much more flexible if you just click on the column letter itself. So I'm gonna go up to where it says E, I'm gonna click it once, and now I've got the entire column E highlighted. The reason that I'm doing this is if I add a drink later, I can just type it below chocolate milk here and it's already gonna be highlighted since it's looking for everything in this E row. Now that we're done with the look of array, I'm gonna type comma again. And now it asks for the return array. And this of course means what do you want the XLOOKUP to return if it finds that value in column E? And we want it to return, of course, the type. So I'm gonna go ahead again, and I'm just gonna click on F here to highlight the entire column. Now I said earlier that the arguments inside of brackets are optional. So let's just end there for now. I'm gonna close the parentheses, and then I'm gonna click Enter, and you can see that the drink type automatically appeared here. In order to drag this down, we just need to move our cursor to the bottom right of the cell, and you can see that it kind of turns into this black T symbol. Once you see that black T appear, you can just double click once. And now you can see that the drink type will appear for every single drink that's listed. So we no longer need to go through our spreadsheet and manually type them out. Now let's back up a little bit and go back into the formula and see what those optional fields will do. I'm gonna type a comma where we left off before. And you can see that the argument name is if not found. Now this is a really cool argument because it's essentially letting you tell the XLOOKUP what to return if it doesn't find the value that you told it to look for inside of the table array. So if you wanted to return a text, which is probably pretty common, you need to write it within quotations. So I'm gonna say, did not find drink name. I'm gonna close the quotations. And again, since the last two are optional, I'm just gonna close the parentheses here and click enter. Now, of course, it's returning fruit here because it sees the name orange drink over here. Well, let's say that I've got banana drink and I type it out here. I'm going to go over to my function and I'm going to double click again. And now you can see that when it hit banana drink, when it got dragged down and did its magic, it's returning did not find the drink name. And that's because it's looking for the data in cell A3, which is banana drink. 
it's looking for that inside of column E and it's not able to find it. So it's returning that information that we specified in that optional argument. The last two optional arguments are probably gonna be used a little bit less, but are still useful to know. Match mode is pretty similar to the true and false argument within a VLOOKUP if you're familiar. It's essentially you telling the XLOOKUP how specific it needs to be when it's looking for that lookup value that you specify. And finally, search mode is all about you telling the lookup how to prioritize its findings. This can be useful if you're using an XLOOKUP for something like grades or number values, where your lookup value might be within a range of numbers and not specifically listed out. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If there's anything I missed or if you have any questions about this lookup function or any other thing in Excel, put it in the comments below and I'll be glad to help you out. Thanks again.